Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. This YouTube channel specializes in the GED math test. So today we're going to go through 10 questions following the different formats of, of questions that you are expected to be able to answer in your test. So question one, which of the following equations describes the same line as y minus 4 is equal to 1 half multiplied by x minus 10? So the first thing you want to do here is you want to clean up or simplify the right side of your equation. So you would multiply that 1 half by x minus 10 and it gives you that result. Next step, you want to isolate the y on the left side of the equation. And the way that you're going to do that is you're going to add 4 to the left side because then 4 minus 4 is going to equal 0. So you're going to isolate the y. Remember that we always do the same thing to both sides, so we would also add a 4 to the right side. And then that gives us uh, this answer. So the correct response is D. This next question is a drop-down menu question. So you can see you have these drop-down menus. When you click on them, they uh, give you a series of options. And they're asking you to interpret some data from this bar graph. So let's quickly remind ourselves of the, th the kind of like four steps of what you want, you want to do when you look at a, line, uh, at a graph. First thing, you want to look at the title. This tells you what the data is about. So in this case, we're looking at members in Joe's gym. The y-axis or vertical axis is telling us what percent of these members are working out. And then the x-axis is telling us at what time these uh, members are working out in the gym. So if you can see at 8 a.m., excuse me, at 6 a.m., we have about maybe 10% of members working out. And you can see that um, at 10, um, excuse me, at 7, it's 15%, etc. All right, so the question asks you what were the busiest times. So you can see that it was between 8 a.m., so click there, and 9 a.m., all right? The next question is a fill-in-the-blank uh, question looking at probability. Okay, so there is a part in the, of the test that looks at statistics, probability, etc. So it says, a Halloween bag contains 27 candies, 7 are chocolates, 10 lollipops, 5 gummy bears, 5 bubble gum. What is the probability that a candy taken at random is either a chocolate or a lollipop? Okay, so let's quickly remind ourselves of this probability ratio. So whenever they ask you to find out a probability, you want to remember this equation, which says that uh, the favorable outcomes, or what you want to happen, divided by all possible outcomes. So in this case, um, they're telling us that there's 27 candies in the bag, so that would be the possible outcomes. And then in the case of chocolates, how many possible, how many favorable outcomes you can have? Can you have seven, right? Because there's seven chocolates. So you have seven um, opportunities to pull out a chocolate out of 27. And then they're telling us that uh, you could also pull out a lollipop. So in this case, the favorable outcome would be 10 over 27. And all you have to do now is just add that fraction across and it would give you 17 over 27. A store is selling pants for $7 and shirts for $3.50. Mo spent uh, $52.50 on shopping and bought 12 items. How many shirts did he buy? All right, so the first thing that I like to do is kind of write the equation out in words. So uh, we know that the price of pants, we would have to multiply that by the number of pants he bought plus the cost of the shirt multiplied by how many shirts he bought, and that would give us the total. So if we plug in the numbers that we have into the equation, in the um, question into the equation, it would look something like this. So now we have to find out how many number of shirts and how many number of pants did he buy. So we don't know how many number of shirts he bought, so we're just going to call that S for shirts. And then we also don't know how many pants he bought, but we do know that he bought 12 items. So we could say that uh, pants, to find out the number of pants, we could say uh, 12 items, right, minus the number of shirts would give us um, the number of pants. So if you plug those variables into your equation like that, uh, all you have to do now is multiply these out. Okay, and you would get this. 
So what we want to do now is isolate that S on the um, left side. So we would go ahead and get rid of that 84 by adding um, minus 84 or subtracting from both sides. And then we want to um, kind of uh, get all our, our terms with an S together. So it would be this. And then we're simply going to divide by 3.50 negative on both sides. And that would give us uh, 9. Okay, so he bought 9 uh, pants. A company launches a new phone priced at $580. The graph shows the cost of the phone over the next four years, where Y represents the market cost versus um, X, which represents the time in years. Determine the rate at which the price drops, drops every two years. All right, so before we um, kind of tackle the question, again, uh, let's read our graph. So we don't have a title here, but we have um, the Y axis telling us that's the price. And then the X axis is telling us the years. And if you look on the line, we have three points and these points are you know, a number followed by another number. Remember, these are coordinates. Okay, so the first number is going to be your x, and your second number is going to be the y. Just to confirm, okay, here you see um, four years. Okay, that's the first number, the x, and then the y is the price, which is 260. Okay, and you would do that for every single number. So what are they asking you? They're asking you the rate at which the price is dropping. So they're, they're wanting you to look at the slope of the line. And the slope of the line can be positive. So you could have a positive slope like this, which we've kind of mostly done in previous um, episodes. Um, but you could also have a negative slope, which is what we have here today. But in, in either case, you're essentially looking at the same thing. Um, meaning how much um, there the change between what we call the rise and the run. All right, and your formula would be this. You would take two points on that line um, and subtract um, them from each other like this. Okay, so now if we look at the line, you might be saying, okay, which of these coordinates do I choose? So you can essentially choose any of them. We're going to go through all of them just to show you that you get the same answer. So let's say that you choose these, um, these coordinates. You would use this equation as we said, okay? So that's how you would work it out. And then that gives you a slope of minus 80. What is that telling you? It's telling you that the price is dropping $80 every two years. Let's say that you choose these points, okay? Same thing, we're gonna take our formula and we're gonna plug those values in and once again, you end up with minus 80. And then finally, let's say that you chose these two points. Again, we put them into our formula and we also end up with minus 80. Okay, so in three cases, you saw that the price is the same. There's an $80 uh, price drop every two years. All right, so as you know, in the GED, you also have a section where you cannot use your calculator. These are about five to seven problems, so uh, don't neglect these problems either. Um, okay, so we're gonna do two quick problems here. So the first one says uh, minus three raised to the second power, and B is very similar, except that you can see that there's some brackets around the minus three. Okay, so in the first case, um, what you have to remember is that when you have a, a number like that, minus 3 raised to a power, the exponent only applies to the base number, okay, not to the negative sign. So you would multiply out your exponent like that. All right, you can see that, again, the negative sign is not involved in the exponent uh, function. And that would give you negative 9. And this is different from what is happening in B. So in B, because you have those brackets around the negative number, as well as your base number, when you do the exponent, you would be multiplying like that. And in this case, it would be a positive 9. Okay, so remember this, this is a really easy mistake to make. I actually made it on a video recently, so um, make sure you look out for this. 
All right, so in the GED, you also have questions relating to things like um, statistics and probability. So in this case, it asks you, Simon is trying to evaluate the, uh, the value of homes in the neighborhood. What is the median price of a home? So there's three really common terms that come up a lot in these statistics portions. So mean, median, and range. Um, median is actually the middle value. Okay, it's not the average, that would be mean. Okay, so median is the middle value. So all you have to do in these questions, you don't actually have to do any calculations. You just have to take all those values that they give you and you have to order them from the lowest value to the highest value. And then the median, as we said, is the middle value. In this case, it would be there. So your correct answer is B. Okay, so we're going to do another drop down menu uh, question, in this case, looking at a line graph. And just to make it a little bit more complicated, I've, um, I've put a, a real graph. Um, so it's asking you um, to look at these uh, US natural gas imports and, um, and specifically answer when the imports were at their lowest. Uh, once again, I always like to see what's in the drop down menu so I know where my answer is going to fall more or less. So let's remind ourselves of how to read one of these graphs. Um, so again, look at the title. This is telling you that we're looking at the US uh, annual natural gas imports and exports. In the y axis, it's telling you um, this gas import, uh, export or import in billions of cubic feet. And in the x-axis is telling you in what year that happened. And sometimes um, you have a legend where they tell you, you know, what each of these lines corresponds to. Here we don't, but they do tell us that in blue is the import and the brown line is the exports. Okay, so let's kind of read the exports uh, line just to... to get an idea of how to do this. So if you look at the brown line, which is the exports, you could see that in the year in the early 70s, basically the US did not export um, much natural gas. And that continued more or less until the year 2000. Then there was a little bit more exports, and then it just went crazy. Okay, uh, the question asks you about imports. Okay, so imports were the blue line. And it's asking you when, um, after a big peak, when were they at their lowest? So they were at their lowest between 2010 and 2015. Okay, so that section there. Juan has 24 X apples, Rita has 11, uh, excuse me, 18 Y blueberries, and Tim has 33 Z peaches. Which, which of the following expressions represents the average number of fruit that the three friends have in their basket? All right, so in this case, um, you have three different expressions, right? And you can't add the X, Y, and Z together because they're different um, elements. Uh, but they're asking you to look at the average number of fruits so uh, that the three friends have. So what you would do is simply divide everything by three, and then that would give you the average of each of these fruits which is option D. Okay, so our final question um, looks at a, a line plot. So in the GED, you also have to be aware that there will be questions where they ask you to actually physically interact with either a graph or a number line. So you have to click your answer onto the, um, to the image. And here, the first thing that you have to do is interpret that table and then take that data and plot it on the line plot. Okay, so if we look at uh, the table, it's giving you the, the frequency of visits to a gym. So in gym visit two, excuse me, zero, you can see that there the number is three. So the, that's the frequency, three visits uh, or three people. Um, in gym visit one, the frequency was one, G gym visit two, the frequency was zero. So all you have to do is take those numbers and plot them in your line graph, okay? So the first gym visit zero, as we said, would be three, the frequency is three, gym visit one, it would be one, 
and two, nothing, three, three, and four, two. Okay, so that's all there is to this question. All right, folks, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. If you found any value, please consider subscribing or um, hitting that notification bell so that you know when we have new videos coming up. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Have a terrific rest of your day.